Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenbord, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Tuesday, October 31st, 5.43 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. Stay of the market, we're in a moderate correction, just slightly below 10% off of the late July highs in the S&P 500. Check the trend gauge over here. We've been uh, on bearish slash downtrend for leaders since October 20th. Uh, as far as the five major indexes go, our short-term 21-day uh, moving average indicator, all five of the major indexes trending below that level. Same thing with the medium-term 50-day moving average, long-term 200-day moving average, a mixed bag as the NASDAQ 100 remains above S&P 500 trying to battle off the lows to get back into it. So what happened today with the FOMC meeting uh, scheduled for tomorrow? Uh, interest rate decision comes out at 2 p.m. Eastern time, followed by a press conference with Fed Chair Jerome Powell. Second straight all green day. It's typical to rally into the Fed. We've seen that quite a bit this year. Uh, the real uh, decision comes uh, by the market comes after the statement and the q a seen a lot of volatility come during the q a and and we've also seen a hawkish statement or a dovish statement followed by a hawkish press conference so uh you never know what you're going to get out of j powell uh and the reaction is key very often the thursday and friday afterwards is what needs to be focused on. And coming this Friday, we've also got an employment report. All of these adding uh, adding to the decision that the market has to make about what valuation do we put on this market with the environment that we're in, with interest rates, uh, war, recession, inflation. Uh, all Fed always, uh, the market always battles uh, a wall of worry, but we've, uh, got more than our share of worry. Then we've also got Apple earnings Thursday after the bell. So the next three days are going to be very interesting in the market. Here are the final numbers. We opened just slightly positive, but we had a positive uh, bias to the market all day long. Big seven up an average of 0.13%. That was led today by Tesla up 1.76. Uh, the other... Uh, other kind of mute uh, moot, kind of muted trade uh, on the other components of the big seven. One of the components of the big 10 or the FANG plus index, AMD reported after hours was initially down about 5%, but climbing back to, to the flat line now on based on what's going on with the press conference. RG8, this is our eight growth ETF composite led today by ARK K up 2.3%, all eight com uh, components positive up on an average of 0.85 percent s p 500 up 0.65 percent nasdaq 100 up 0.48 dow up 0.38 small caps and mid caps both closed up nine tenths global 60 40 up 0.29 uh bonds just barely higher emerging markets uh down but by uh toward the end of the session some strength came into uh, non-U.S. foreign developed nations, and that gave us the final number of 0.29%. In-house growth protection, we added some exposure. We'll talk about that uh, when we get to the tail of the tape, just barely positive on the day as gold and uh, commodities pulled back with a strong dollar today. Let's get right into it. Start off with the S&P 500. I want you to note very subtle oversold hook up on uh, the uh, daily stochastic. That's a positive for the market. Uh, you can see sometimes you get minor false starts on this, but you normally, uh, as of late, haven't been staying oversold for more than uh, a couple of weeks, one, two, three weeks. Uh, we're in our second week now and hooking up sooner than we had uh, the previous times, no guarantee of anything, but tomorrow we are uh, entering the window for a follow-through day on the NASDAQ 100 as that did not undercut 
the lows from last Thursday while all other indexes did. So tomorrow would be a day three for the other four indexes. Uh, day four, that's what opens the window. Why do we wait till day four? Because very often all we see is short covering off of a low. And after uh, this third leg down fairly steep over the last two weeks, it's normal to have short covering. Uh, it's really the combination of the follow through day strength and positive action by potential leading stocks uh, along with no distribution for the first five days afterwards. There's a bunch of rules we follow, uh, but when the rule, they keep us out of harm's way and they also keep us on the right side of the market. So there's your S&P 500, NASDAQ 100. Note again how it did not uh, undercut Thursday's low. That was primarily because of uh, Amazon's earnings report, but there are a lot of bars on this chart that has a, that have an asterisk of primarily because because of the big weighting of these stocks. If you look at the QQEW, this is the equal weight. It did undercut. If you look broadly at the NASDAQ uh, composite, it did not undercut. And uh, the NASDAQ composite also regained the 200-day moving average today as it is uh, weaker has been weaker than uh, the QQQ because of the heavy weights uh, in the big seven in the NASDAQ 100, but you can see NASDAQ 100 uh, never touched the 200 day moving average. So into the declining eight EMA on the NASDAQ 100, same situation on the S&P 500. This is our short term moving average that we use. First thing you wanna do as part of a rally is get back above that short-term ADMA and uh, get it to hook up and rally above it and you can and then use it as a guide. Here's an example back here, 526 when we started rallying, uh, quite a bit of this uh, took place above the ADMA. The couple times we pulled back contained by the 21, that's exactly what you want to see. This is the kind of the textbook that we're looking for for a uh, multi-month rally and it all begins with a move back above a declining ADMA and 8 EMA and a hook back to, from a declining slope to flat to a positive slope. Right now we're kind of flattened out. Uh, so that's what we look for. Let's go to the Dow. Dow actually closed above the 8 EMA today. Uh, second day off the bottom with the Dow again. Uh, this is heavily skewed by a couple of high weighted stocks because it is a price weighted index. On to mid caps, MDY rallying into the declining eight day moving average. Also second day off the bottom, small caps also not quite into the eight, but also the second day off the bottom. So those are the five major indexes. Let's go to the VIX. VIX off quite a bit for the second straight day back below. Uh, that 20 level and back below the 21 day moving average. Uh, this is very interesting. Um, we're see, we saw fear really, the VIX really come off quite a bit over the last two sessions uh, and combine that with a decent 1.7, 1.8% 1 rally on the S&P 500 as the market tries to carve out a bottom. One thing we do want is the VIX in our favor. We'd also like to see volatility contracting uh, today, we had less than a 1% range on the S&P, so that's a positive as the ATR on the S&P uh, crept all the way up to 1.35% on a daily basis. Let's go to the dollar. Uh, dollar closed at the high of the day. This was a tailwind for commodities today. You can see here on the five minute, it gapped up, uh, showed some strength intraday, then just kind of uh, flat line or uh, based into the close. How did that roll over to uh, the precious metals? Back to the old uh, dollar up, precious metals down. Normal pullback though, still uh, for gold down 0.55%, still above the eight. GDX down 2.64%. Now gold stocks hit obviously much worse than gold and they have not been uh, outperforming to the extent that gold has been outperforming. You can see they're still below their 200-day moving average while gold is uh, up near the breakout level. And uh, on to SLV, silver down 1.7% failure at the 200-day uh, moving average for now. Bitcoin BITO 
mentioned we bought this yesterday, up slightly today, up 0.34% as it consolidates near the top uh, pivot of this uh, double bottom base that it's formed. On the bonds, broad bond index BND just barely down, but did close at the lows of the day. We did see some, uh, some uh, subtle change in uh, direction on bonds today. Let's look at the TLT. You can see that closed down and at the lows of the day. And if you look at the five minute, we gapped up uh, on bonds or uh, yeah, on bond prices and we rallied. So this corresponded with rates coming off. Uh, then rates were rising into the close while rates were rising. You can see this big ugly bar down uh, into the close on the TLT. You won't see that on TYX because uh, bond trading closes at three o'clock, but uh, this is contrary to what we're seeing, what we saw in the indexes. So the index is strong all day uh, and uh, rates pretty much rising all day. Let's go to TYX, the 30 year. You can see rates gap down uh, and made a lower low up through uh, right before lunchtime and then started rallying uh, as the day went along. That's the 30 year. Let's go to the TNX. A gap down, made lower lows, rallied also. So while, again, while rates were rising, the market continued uh, to rally. So that's the inner asset correlation that we cover. Let's go to the tail of the tape. You can pause this uh, very quickly. We are on the bear case, sustained break below the 21 EMA. 2 p.m. tomorrow, FOMC rate decision. It's like 99% that there's not going to be a rate, but it's really the commentary, the statement, and the press conference Q&A that is going to drive the reaction to the market. Day count, second day up, right on the ADMA on the S&P 500. So a zero count there, 10th day below the 21 on the S&P 500 as part of the third wave down that's in progress. As far as uh, sectors go, Banks uh, were stronger early in the day, but just really ended up by the end of the day in line. Uh, uranium up 4%, XLRE strong up 2% despite rates rising. Software also strong today up 1.2% uh, to the downside, downside. Oil services, gold, silver, gold and silver stocks and emerging markets. Two trades. Uh, we bought CCJ, this, uh, this is on their earnings report, this is a uranium miner, and Netflix uh, bought uh, two buys on Netflix. We now have a half position on that, raised our beta to 0 0.15. So you might be wondering why I'm buying stocks before the follow through day, and I'll expl explain that shortly. But the bottom line, second straight all green day, FOMC on deck tomorrow. Uh, should be a pretty uh, interesting session tomorrow. So a couple of uh, charts. First of all, let's start off with uh, what we bought today, CCJ. We've been monitoring uh, several earnings reports and we're also monitoring things that are possible uh, stocks to buy that don't necessarily move with the market. The, the least correlated sector to the overall S&P 500 is energy. Uh, we classify uh, this stock, uranium stock, think nuclear, uh, very positive comments by the CEO during the conference call. It had been a, a big leading name. Let's go back to its last earnings report. Initially gapped down, closed at the high of the day. That kicked off a really nice run from 34 all the way up to 42 uh, in less than two months before uh, a harsh break. Uh, and then forming kind of a base, not quite long enough to be a flat base. Uh, but this gap up today on big volume, closed near the high of the range, back through this 40 level, coupled with uh, what we know from the industry based on our prior research that Mike did a lot of, and also uh, the fact that it doesn't necessarily move in sync with the market. Uh, and uh, the strength in the comments of the CEO, and we felt it was a good low risk reward to take a starter position of 2% in this today. Netflix, three, we've had three positive reactions to earnings. Uh, Netflix 
was the first one. Three positive reactions by, let's say, the the uh, big eight, if we want to say the big seven plus Netflix, uh, initially went higher. Now, this is in the face of the market continuing to sell off while the relative strength of Netflix continued to go higher. So the com combination, I've, I've been very clear about what we look for, and that's positive relative strength, low risk entry that really didn't seem like uh, we were going to get much lower risk and entry on Netflix uh, after testing the ADMA and bouncing off of it, which corresponded with the 50-day, and we've got the 21-day coming back up through it. It's also a Livermore 400 level. It's also prior support over here on the left side of the chart. Add all those things up, and uh, it just seemed prudent since we have no overall uh, index exposure anymore because of our stops below the 200-day moving average. The combination of Netflix and CCJ is basically like uh, having a 10% uh, position in the S&P 500. So uh, it seems a reasonable risk to take uh, to get uh, low risk entry into two potential leaders. And uh, those are the changes that we made today. Also note uh, the pretty nice uh, earnings acceleration. Uh, kicking back in on Netflix and the PE all the way down to 41. So this is not uh, an unreasonable um, PE ratio and especially not a peg ratio. So those uh, those are the trades that we made. Let's take a look at two other nice reactions to earnings today. Anet sold off going into earnings by the end of the day, near all-time highs at this 200 level relative strength confirming. Uh, this is pretty high on our watch list, but it is somewhat volatile. And Pinterest trying to come back from the dead. Uh, double bottom base that failed, as you can see here, but uh, it's still on there and a big gap up. 557% uh, earnings growth is, or uh, volume, up 19%. Got to pay attention to that. Uh, goes uh, into our 21 over 21 list at a medium. And we're certainly, the volume is what really gets my attention on this, the 557% up 19%. Uh, we studied enough of these. Uh, we've got the overhook, uh, the hook back up from oversold. We studied enough of these to uh, know where they, when they should be high on the list uh, for further uh, follow-up. Uh, the Canary and the Coal Mine Deckers, uh, third day up now after its gap above earnings. So we can't say that all earnings gaps are failing when we can see follow through like this in fundamentally sound stocks. Two that are not working and two that I mentioned as we're showing relative strength and they might be forming bases, cross that off the list today. Here's the relative strength or off the 200 day moving average. Big sell-off on ELF today. Didn't really see any news. They've got earnings tomorrow, so somebody front-running the earnings and getting out today as the volume was heavy. And the other one that was a leader from the last uh, bull run, Celsius, was showing relative strength not uh, over the last week, revisiting this 150 level down on heavy volume today. So a mixed bag there, but certainly some things emerging to keep our eye on. Actually have the chance for a follow through day tomorrow on the NASDAQ 100 and then Thursday on the rest of the indexes. Couple of leaders, we've got at least 10, in my opinion, that uh, look viable. We'll talk about those in tomorrow night's video. And with that, we're gonna wrap it. As always, like to hear from you. The email's donnerverasset.com. Phone's 855-REAL-WEALTH, that's 855-732-5932. You can also contact my partner, Dan Stewart, dan at revereasset.com, if you're interested in becoming a client. Reminder, it's not how much you make in the markets, it's how much of that you can keep. We've been cutting our losses and chopping things down leading into uh, the beginning of this week, taking a few positions, dipping some toes in the water on some low-risk entries today, uh, as I discussed when we took a look at the charts. With that, I'm going to wrap up the video for Tuesday, October 31st. Happy uh, Halloween to everybody out there. And um, thanks for listening and have a great day.